His Excellency, the President and Commander-in-Chief of the Nigerian Armed Forces, Mohamedou Buhari, and the uh, Chairman of the Presidential Tax Force uh, Committee on the COVID-19 uh, pandemic, and also the CDC, um, uh, the NCDC, uh, for all that you are doing, uh, especially your response to this pandemic that is ravaging the world and our nation. And uh, we are indeed very grateful to the president and the governors of the states and uh, the Federal Capital Territory uh, um, Minister for the prompt action being taken in order to respond and to control and fight this pandemic that has evaded the world and brought everything to a standstill. Indeed, we are grateful and we come to show our support to what you are doing and also to contribute our quota in this fight. As part of our contribution, we are approaching uh, this issue in three ways. First is our spiritual response in prayer. Um, we know that without the help of God, we can do nothing. And uh, we are trusting the Lord who has promised us and uh, also encouraged us not to be afraid, especially when things like this happen and we seem not to know what to do. In Isaiah chapter 43, uh, 2 verses 1 and 2, he has asked us not to be afraid that he is with us. We want to encourage you and your team and indeed the whole Nigerians that uh, the Lord is with us. God will help us. For he says that even when we pass through the waters, it will not overwhelm us. If we pass through the rivers, it will not carry us away. And if we pass through the fire, the fire will not consume us. If we look at the situation, it may seem as if uh, the fire is burning and there is nothing that can be done. Even in this situation, we want to assure Nigerians that the Lord is with us. He will help us. He will defend us. He will fight for us. He will heal the sick and comfort the bereaved and help the downtrodden. He has always been the helper of the poor and the needy. So our response to this situation is first of all uh, prayer. We have encouraged every member of the Church of Nigeria Anglican Communion to be in prayers. And since the 1st of April, every Wednesday and Friday is declared days of solemn prayer, fasting and prayer. And our desire and expectation is that God will answer us as he promised and also heal our land and heal our people. The second is that we have asked every bishop and diocese and every, uh, every parish to build up their food store and um, to help our members, indigent members, not only the members of the church, but also our neighbors, all those around us. And uh, with this response, we have seen uh, dioceses taking actions, parishes helping their members and uh, encouraging them because this is surely a passing phase. It will come and it will pass away and we will live to give glory to God. And uh, the other prong in this, in responding to this COVID uh, 
um, 19 is to support the government, both at state and federal level. And uh, that is one of the things that has brought us today to identify with you and the, your committee, your task force in this fight to assure you that we are standing with you and you have uh, the support of the Church of Nigeria. And to this end, we have seen actions being taken, even at regional, provincial, and the state levels. Um, we are here today representing the bishops and our bishops, the clergy and the laity of the Church of Nigeria, bringing our contribution uh, in material terms. And uh, we are here with uh, the medical consumables um, to identify and stand with, the, uh, with those who are in the front line of this battle, especially those gallant and brave medical doctors and nurses and healthcare givers who risk their lives daily on our behalf to care for those that are infected. So we have brought some medical consumables, uh, the PPE, um, Azion exam examination gloves, um, medical gloves, um, and 3M aura protective face mask, NCP hand sanitizers, NCP uh, um, uh, hand sanitizers, both of 100 or 110 milli milliliters and also the 500. And uh, also we have brought some NCP uh, antiseptic liquid so that they will use in their work and in this fight. Uh, this is our uh, contribution, our little contribution. And we are also standing by to do more. And we trust that the Lord will help us. In addition to this, we are also encouraging our dioceses and uh, our, um, uh, what we are bringing uh, in this visit may be of about 100, uh, 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 about 10 million naira worth. And um, we have also asked our dioceses to um, do something to help the state governments and their regional areas. The ecclesiastical province of Lagos has given 5 million Naira donation to the, local, to the Lagos state government and 5 million Naira donation to Ugu state government. The Lagos diocese has also given 5 million Naira to Lagos state government. And um, they have also distributed um, 20 million Naira worth of food and medical consumables to, local, uh, to Lagos state uh, uh, government. And um, about 700,000 Naira worth of uh, medical supplies to the uh, Lagos State uh, University Teaching Hospital. Lagos West Diocese has also given about 5.4 million Naira worth of things, palliatives to Lagos State also. And uh, we have also done something in Abuja here. The churches within Abuja here uh, Abuja Diocese has distributed food that is worth up to 5 million Naira. And uh, our parishes are helping our people. The Diocese of Asaba has also, by last weekend, they distributed food that is worth up to 4 million Naira uh, to the people in our rural localities. And uh, we are standing shoulder to shoulder not only in prayers, but in using the resources that the Lord has given us. And uh, we are encouraging our people to do more because this is an uncertain time and the challenge is getting 
more and more as we see the number of uh, infected people uh, increasing. And uh, uh, we want to also plead that our people be patient. Uh, if we will stand in faith, in hope, and the little support that we can give to one another, we are trusting God that we shall defeat COVID-19 together, and we shall live to give the testimony of what God has done for us. So on behalf of the Church of Nigeria Anglican Communion, we come to stand with you and to encourage you and to pray for the presidential tax force and other committees that are working, both at federal and state levels, uh, that we are together with you in this fight. The Lord will help you, Amen. and the Lord will uh, save us and deliver us. Amen. His Excellency the President, and um, expressing our condolence for the demise of um, the Chief of Staff, uh, to the president, um, Abba Kere. And um, Abba Kere was an old student of the Anglican uh, Secondary School, uh, St. Paul's College, Kufena Usasa Zaria. And so for us, it's a loss of one of us, one of our own. Uh, because, if anything, the Anglican Church contributed in, in his formation as a young man. And um, we thank God that he has served this nation dutifully and with commitment and patriotism. And uh, we pray for the consolation of the family, the presidency, and our nation, Nigeria. Um, thank you, sir. The premier of all Nigeria Church of uh, of Nigeria, the Anglican Communion, uh, my Lord Bishops, Madam, and other uh, men of God that has uh, that have accompanied my Lord the uh, the Archbishop of uh, Abuja Diocese and the premier of the Anglican Communion. Uh, Permanent Secretary, GSO, and other government officials. Let me start on this very positive note by congratulating you, sir, on your election and also installation as the Premier of the Anglican Communion in Nigeria. We were looking forward to a very great celebration. Uh, I received the personal invitation of uh, uh, the, uh, uh, your predecessor, uh, the uh, Bishop Nicholas, uh, I mean, uh, Archbishop Nicholas Oko, uh, to attend. And we were all preparing uh, for that glorious uh, uh, outing, his official exit as the premier and your installation as the new premier. But as God would have it, uh, uh, it was low keyed and uh, we were not privileged to attend, uh, but we believe and trust that in the session of your tenure, there will be many, many more celebrations that we will be privileged uh, to attend. So uh, this morning, on behalf of the president and the government of Nigeria, I want to extend our, 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 our congratulations to you and the family and the church in its entirety and uh, our prayer is that uh, during your reign, may the church continue to prosper, may it grow in leaps and bounds, and may the purpose for which Jesus Christ established his church be fulfilled under your leadership as the premier of the Anglican Communion. Uh, I want to thank you for this visit and to truly, truly appreciate uh, what the church has decided as its response uh, to this particular season and times in which we find ourselves. I have received your letter earlier and I looked at it and I saw the number of interventions that the church has involved itself in. 
And uh, on behalf of the president uh, and the presidential task force on COVID-19, uh, we want to personally extend our gratitude to the church for the wonderful way that the church had uh, stepped up to its responsibility. The church is the bastion of compassion for the people. And at uh, this very critical moment of our life, uh, there is nowhere to find Soko more than the church. By way of words of counsel, by way of even looking at the spiritual needs of members of your congregation mm -hmm. and extending a helping hand to the areas where you operate. And you've demonstrated that by the three steps that you've enumerated this morning. First, the area of prayer. If we had not prayed in this nation before, this is the time to pray. This is the time to pray and call upon the God of heaven for his mercy upon our nation. Nobody prepares for this pandemic. But as believers, we are not left without a witness that uh, it's instructive. When you read the scriptures, you come across the fact that there are predictions of the fact that perilous times will come. Mm -hmm. Times of plagues and all sorts of uh, pandemics will come. But the encouragement we have is that he has told us to be of good cheer because he has overcome. Yes. Even with COVID-19, Nigeria would overcome. Because that's the assurance we have, that God is looking after all of us. And because he has a plan and a purpose for why he created a nation like Nigeria, mm -hmm. he will not allow the devil to truncate his program. Mm -hmm. His agenda must be fulfilled, whether the devil likes it or not. And in building his church, he said he will build his church upon this rock, that even the gates of hell cannot prevail against it. So COVID-19 is a small devil that is playing around. But God would definitely, definitely overcome it for the sake of the righteous. He would not allow this pandemic to consume us. And that's why the place of prayer is important, sir. And I want to thank you that the church has on its own decided that two days in a week is devoted to solemn time of fasting and prayer for the nation and for the entire world. The other area is what you have done and which I must say it's gratifying. You've asked your bishops, build up your food banks, make sure there is food available to the indigent members of the co congregation and also extend a helping hand to be truly your brother's keepers. There can be a better demonstration of our Christian faith more than being our brother's keepers at this particular moment. Because this is the moment that people are asking, why is God in this? Mm -hmm. And the only way you can confirm to them that God exists is when you extend this help to them in these very perilous times. Mm -hmm. So you have demonstrated that by the second step that you have taken. And by extension, the support that you have given, the third step, support that you have given to governments at different levels. What that tells those of us that are in government is that, look, the church is behind you, not only playing with you, not only extending support to members of the congregation and the community where they exist, by demonstrating their true Christian values, but we are also stepping up our action by identifying with what you are doing. I know that the Anglican Church is one church that has already told its members Stay at home. And the only way we can deal with this pandemic scientifically established is when we reduce communication and flow of traffic between people. Mm -hmm. 
We've looked at the, uh, the, 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 the modelings. We've seen that about 45%, you can achieve about 45% of risk if you restrict movement of reducing the chances of infection. Mm. Face mask probably is about 7%, social distancing about 6 or 7%, but the cessation of movement contributes about 45%. Mm. I know it's very difficult for the churches now that have been used to congregate it. But I told myself when I was live streaming the Sunday service from my local church, and I said, well, probably we are being reminded that the church is not the building. It's not the building. It's down on me that we are being reminded, uh, God is using this process to remind us that the church is not the building. The church is you and I and what we carry in our hand. So as difficult as these times are, I want to truly, sir, on behalf of the government, thank you for what you're doing with the leadership of the Anglican Communion in assisting the government, in telling our congregants the need to stay at home, the need to observe personal hygiene, washing of hands, using sanitizer or any locally uh, processed one. I, I now see that the local ones are coming on, the, uh, on stream. And the need to stay apart, maintain social distancing, all in an effect to reduce the rate of transmission and so that we can flatten the curve and begin to take people out of the communities isolate them, trace them, test them. If they show symptoms or don't show symptoms, provided they are contacts. That way, we can now get on top of the situation. Sir, I say for God, you can see how countries with well established medical infrastructure are crumbling under the weight of COVID 19. I say for God, our story would have been different. But I know we serve a very merciful, uh, gracious God that is full of compassion. And because of the cries of his children and the prayers that are ascending to the throne of grace, he has a listening ear. He listens to us. And because of our cry, he would definitely answer our prayers and heal this land. Going forward, I believe that Nigeria will emerge strong with your support, with your prayers, and our lives will never be the same again. Mm -hmm. After COVID-19, this country will never be the same again. Mm -hmm. And lastly, I want to thank you for the leadership of church for extending your condolences over the demise of your old student. Mm -hmm. A lot of people never knew the Mala Abba went to Kufena. I mean, St. Paul's College area, mm. uh, until he passed on. Uh, people began to hear uh, that he spent five good years in Kufena. So I want to thank you for extending those condolences. And uh, this uh, letter will get to the president. Yes. And I think at an appointed time, you will receive an acknowledgement uh, uh, over it. Uh, so with these very few remarks, uh, on behalf of the President and Government of Nigeria, I want to truly appreciate uh, you and the leadership of the Church for finding time to come at this very critical moment and for identifying what, what Government is doing in the overall interest of our people. And I ask that you extend the gratitude of the Government and the President to the congregation and tell them that we truly appreciate it. And we ask them to continue to do more because uh, we are still in the midst of this thing. We don't know when it will end. But God, in his perfect wisdom, will terminate this thing at his own time. We just have to do our bit, and I believe that the church is doing its bit. Thank you so much, sir. Thank you. Sir. Thank you, SGF. Um,
we, uh, we now invite His Grace, the Primate, to please um, say a few.